So not long ago, I asked you guys for topic ideas and things that you wanted me to respond to. Uh, so I got some of those. And today, there's one specific one that I'd like to take on. It's a, it's a letter that I received um, from a fan, a viewer. So let's take a quick look at this first. He says, Hi, I'd love to see an article or video responding to a friend of mine's comment on her daughter deciding to be a lesbian. I gave it a shot, of course, but text messaging isn't the best format. Quote, she has not forced it down anyone's throat and was a huge realization for her and us to accept. It's not bad or evil. It is just who she is. This is a complex issue with much to unpack and discuss. While this is not a path I would wish for her or would choose for her, it is who she is and there are many social emotional impacts. I am still coming to terms with it and learning to accept it as ultimately she is my daughter and her happiness is the most important thing to me. Unquote. To which I replied that the most important thing is eternal salvation in heaven, not happiness on earth. Anyway, is homosexuality evil? Is it just who they are? Etc. Thanks. Okay, so that's that's the letter that we are responding to today. And I do agree, there's, there's actually a lot to unpack there. Like, Okay, we, we take the, the question there, is homosexuality evil? Well, I mean, what do we mean by homosexuality first? We mean the sexual attraction to people of the same sex, right? Now, your attraction is not evil. It simply is, right? You can't control what you're, what you're attracted to. I mean, like, maybe, maybe you are, in some cases, born that way. I remember reading a while back about this study on primates where they were exposed to it was some like hormone thing i don't know if it's like estrogen or something in the womb or, or something like that like that and the uh the primates that, that came out of that were more, like more likely to be to engage in homosexual behavior so uh there is that i mean and with all the plasticizing agents and phytoestrogens and everything in our water supply who knows there's also of course the uh the trauma of various types in childhood, which I think in at least some cases is responsible for these attractions. But in any case, it still comes down to an attraction is not an evil of itself. It just simply is something that the individual is experiencing. But that's different from the actual homosexual act, right? If you were willing to say, because I, uh, so this, this is what society does. They just, at the, at the moment, they just say, okay, so the person has this attraction, therefore it is who they are, it is their, their identity, and therefore they can and should act upon it, and their acting upon it cannot be evil because it is who they are because they have the attractions. And that doesn't make any sense. Firstly, I mean, we're supposed to be more than our primal instincts. Right? We're supposed to be more than our every desire. It's like this, okay? If I was browsing through a jewelry store and I saw this really pretty necklace and I was like, I want that and therefore I stole it, like, well, I mean, it, it was my desire. So therefore I had, a, I had a right to engage in that. I had a right to take it. Or if I had a proclivity towards theft, would that be who I was and therefore, you know, what I ought to do? Like, just the fact that you have an urge does not mean that you are supposed to embrace the urge. We're supposed to be more than that. We're called to be more than that. Um, so is it who they are? No, because you're more than your sin as well, right? I mean, you're more than, than every desire. I think a pretty good way of thinking about it too, perhaps more on point, is you take a married person, just, you know, take a, a married woman, whatever, um, and she sees some other guy who th she thinks is attractive. Well, she was made that way, to take a very popular phrase, made to have attractions that don't simply cease because she's married, but that doesn't give her a moral right to therefore act upon it and to engage in adultery. And so this is the sort of moral dynamic that isn't discussed by society at large. It's simply, you know, he, she had the feeling and therefore is gay and therefore has to, no, no. Now I will say that the people who, who do struggle with uh, homosexual ideation, they, 
and that's a it's a heavy burden for them to bear that's the reality that they're unlikely to ever you know bear children of their own if they're you know unable to have those attractions it it means that they are called to a chaste life this is a this is a difficult burden genuinely and it deserves compassion but at no point should we say well just embrace that and go with it it's it's destructive it's destructive to your soul and when you engage in an actual homosexual act that's not just who you are that's your choice to engage in this thing that's counter to nature that is unhealthy and i mean yeah i guess you could say it's evil and the fact that it's it's sinful but it hurts you and it hurts the person that you engage in it with right i mean again it's one of these things that it's like kind of hard to discuss because so many of our words have been um taken over and redefined but like if you if you love somebody just if you have to stop for a second and ask what that means it's more than just i feel an emotion towards that person that's positive it's 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 far more than that it's it's to love someone is to want the highest good for that person and the highest good for any of us is is always going to be eternal union with god that's that's the absolute highest best good that any of us can can have or want and so if you want that for the other person say okay just take this particular argument and you're having homosexual attractions and um but you want the highest good for the other person who you believe to who you love right if you want the highest good for them you love them then you don't want to engage in this thing that will cause them to be departed from from that eternal union i mean to do so is actually like a really unloving thing it is to to say you know what my personal pleasure is worth more than your salvation and that can't be love and that can't be um a good in any sense and i know this is very I don't know, counter to what's normally spoken about but it's the truth and perhaps that's why it's so counter to what's normally spoken about um but there you go well, ultimately it's it's not about it's not just a reduction to attraction a reduction to vice we all have different vices and things that we're attracted to that aren't good for us but we're called to be specifically more than that so that's the thing this this reduction of had attraction and therefore you know i i don't think is i think it's very reductionist and intentionally so and this this whole thing about and it was also in the letter how this woman this lesbian uh or person who's struggling with that particular attraction hasn't forced it down anyone's throat and it was a huge realization for her it's like well, it kind of sounds like she has she's wanting everyone to you know to know about it and accept it not to not to know about it and and help her and be supportive in the fact that she now has this um cross to bear that's that's rather a different thing and i think that that's something to bear in mind the moment that you're sort of shouting your vice and wanting other people to in some way applaud you for the vice um you're not doing what's good for you you're not doing what's good for society or for your family again it's one thing if you want to share hey i'm struggling with this and you know with, with the people who are closest to you um or with the spiritual director or what have you but that's one thing but what you in what you increasingly see is instead a self-identification by the person's vice and a a seeking of some degree of approval for that vice by other people which again is an attempt at leading them away from that perpetual union and therefore is itself not an act of love and not a genuine good it's not i mean and this this particular i believe it was a mother um said that what she wants obviously for her daughter is is happiness because that's the most important thing i was like well okay um are, are we i'm not really sure that you can take the approach that that particular lifestyle will ultimately lead to happiness i don't think that's demonstrated obviously i know that on the other side of the grave now um but but even here i don't think that the embrace of such things will lead you to 
happiness ultimately like yeah briefly you can be all I, I i feel so free and liberated and you can have that sort of moment but that's i don't that's real happiness i think that any sort of enduring happiness comes from living a life of meaning and our our relationships are supposed to be properly ordered towards something of meaning right so when you've got a husband and a wife you know who are who are there to help each other to become saints and also to you know to bring other children into the world i mean that that's a proper order that's going somewhere but a a union of any homosexual couple is not going anywhere it's divorced of all meaning it's absolutely vacant and vacuous and won't lead to happiness on this side of the grave or the next i hope that helps